United Airlines, Northrop Grumman, American, and Japan Airlines have all placed orders for the as-of-yet-to-be-built Boom Supersonic Overture, 80-passenger, $200 million jet that is billed to fly 1.7 times the speed of sound while using environmentally friendly sustainable fuel. However, there is just one big problem. Well, make that two big problems now. 1. If history is a guide, Boom Supersonic will never get off the ground. And 2. Now that their partner who was going to produce the engines for Boom pulled out, yeah, Boom Supersonic literally may never get off the ground. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maxim is here with one of the more hot topics lately on YouTube aviation channels. And while many are excited by the prospect of supersonic flight returning to commercial aviation to replace the legendary Concorde which stopped flying in 2003, the odds of that actually happening are unimaginably high. After all, there's a reason it's been 20 years since the last supersonic commercial aircraft flew. As Thomas Black of Bloomberg News recently put it, the Concorde, which made its first scheduled passenger flights in 1976, was more of a cult hit than a commercial success. That's why airliners still chug along well below the sound barrier, which is about 680 miles an hour at 30,000 feet. Well, now engine maker Rolls-Royce may have just delivered the coup de grace to boom, with their announcement that they have officially ended their involvement and partnership in Boom Supersonic's ambition to develop a new supersonic commercial aircraft, leaving the remaining engine options available to Boom extremely limited, if not non-existent. In Rolls-Royce's official statement about the matter, they said, we've completed our contract with Boom and delivered various engineering studies for their Overture supersonic program. The statement continued that after careful consideration, Rolls-Royce has determined that the commercial aviation supersonic market is not currently a priority for us and therefore will not pursue further work on the program at this time. It has been a pleasure to work with the Boom team and we wish them every success in the future. But it was in July of 2020 that Boom founder and CEO Blake Scholl said, we look forward to building on the progress and rapport that we've already built with our collaboration with Rolls-Royce. As we work to refine Overture's design and bring sustainable supersonic transport to passenger travel again. But with Rolls-Royce's sudden September 7 departure announcement, Boom seems to be publicly, at least for the moment, brushing off concerns about Rolls-Royce's departure, issuing an official statement saying, we are appreciative of Rolls-Royce's work over the last few years, but it became clear that Rolls' proposed engine design and legacy business model is not the best option for Overture's future airline operators or passengers. Boom added that later this year we will announce our selected engine partner and our transformational approach for reliable, cost-effective, and sustainable supersonic flight. However, Boom is still targeting the first flight of their aircraft Overture in 2026, with a first delivery still scheduled in 2029. But historically, Boom has missed a few optimistic deadlines, such as when the company said it would fly a demonstrator supersonic aircraft called XB-1 in 2021. But that flight still hasn't materialized as of yet. Michael Merluzzo, an aerospace analyst with consultancy AIR, describes Boom's project as an imperfect fit for Rolls-Royce. He calls Boom an expensive and risky endeavor that faces regulatory hurdles and says Rolls-Royce is best served to deploy its resources to safer, more lucrative projects, such as developing engines for the next commercial airliner from Airbus or Boeing. So now, with Rolls-Royce out at Boom, the only other logical potential engine partner would be GE Aviation. But that's going to be a long shot, because GE just went through this same situation not long ago with another supersonic startup. Arion, who folded up shop in May of 2021. As Thomas Black wrote in Bloomberg News recently in May of 2021, he said that a Texas billionaire's supersonic jet dream dies as Arion folds. The startup's demise came just when it looked as if it was truly going to produce its supersonic aircraft, the AS-2. The company had hired a lot of experienced aviation industry executives, boasted many orders, and more important, had an engine maker. 
General Electric was taking a crack at developing the perfect engine that was quiet and able to cruise efficiently above and below the speed of sound. But Arion ended up owing $32 million to GE for engine work. And Arion had all the right partners, including Boeing, and had FlexJet, the second largest operator of private jets, as a launch customer. The list of wealthy people waiting to sign up for a chance to buy a showboat aircraft that would smoke all their rivals clunkers grew. NetJets, the largest operator of private aircraft owned by none other than Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, signed up to buy 20 AS2s in March of 2021. Two months later, Arion collapsed. And Thomas Black's Bloomberg article continued to make sense, saying that the boom supersonic sudden resurgence begs the question, if the business opportunities were so solid, why wouldn't Boeing, Airbus, or Lockheed Martin already have such an aircraft in development? Yes, startups can and do disrupt established industries, but manufacturing such a complex plane on budget and on time, especially keeping prices low enough for potential passengers to afford, requires more than entrepreneurial brashness. Passengers probably aren't going to pay too much more than a business class ticket to reduce the trip from Los Angeles to Hawaii from about 5 to 3 hours. Plus, considering the sheer expense and capital investment of such a project is monumental. There's probably not a lot of risk appetite from engine makers that are flogging the supply chain to keep up with the existing need to feed power plants to Boeing and Airbus. Black points out rightly so in his article that GE CEO Larry Culp most likely isn't salivating to make a big bet on supersonic travel as one of the first projects of his standalone aerospace company. Now, as I mentioned earlier, many aviation enthusiasts on YouTube and other platforms are excited by the idea of supersonic commercial flights returning, myself included. I would love to see supersonic flight again. However, you just can't tell one side of a story and just say Boom says they're going to fly by 2026 and take that as gospel. Sure, hope is a wonderful thing, but Boom Supersonic has astronomical odds to overcome if they ever hope to, as I said, literally get this project off the ground. So what do you think? Am I coming off as negative or a boom hater? Or are you like me and have more realistic attitude when it comes to innovation like this and just take a wait and see approach? Please make sure to let me know down below. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. Oh, and before we go, I need to thank a few people for supporting the channel through our Buy Me A Coffee app. Dennis, Roger G, and finally a cameo. Thank you so much for your continued support. And as always, if you'd like to help support the channel, the links are always in the description. And if you think I've earned it, please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time. In the air. Yeah. This is Maximus.